the possibility of exist existence of human uh, life human life in uh, the earth so it is the most important thing ever so we can uh, live for some days several days without food okay or uh, water but without oxygen or without air we cannot survive within few minutes within few minutes we will uh, die the persons uh, will be died because air is very important thing in our life so for the uh, survival of the living beings air is the most important or necessary or precious thing ever so without air fuels cannot burn to produce heat energy so heat is the form of energy without which man uh, cannot exist on earth so due to the presence of sunlight okay sunlight is coming sunlight is falling so due to the uh, the presence of sunlight or or releasing of heat energy so that uh, uh, human life is exist on the earth so our planet earth is uh, uh, is correctly uh, our it is a correct place habitable zone it is called habitable zone so it means planet earth is not uh, far away from the sun and it is uh, too closer to the sun it is uh, put in a correct place understand so that is why on the earth the human or uh, living beings or uh, survival of living beings is possible understand so because uh because of the presence of this heat energy only if sun is absent then uh, we cannot uh, produce uh, that uh, survival of living beings is not a possible it is highly impossible if the sun sun is absent so air also occurs in water in dissolved state so in a, how that aquatic animals are surviving do you do you think how aquatic animals like fishes all the aquatic animals which uh, the animals uh, uh, which are living in the oceans seas or water simply water living in the water how uh, do they survive how do they survive because in in, in a water uh, oxygen is in a dissolved state it is in dissolved state then aquatic plants will be there in at the uh, under the Uh, deep oceans if you go to deeper then uh, you can see some aquatic plants understand how they are survive without uh, uh, carbon dioxide so with uh, there is a carbon dioxide actually that is dissolved state that is in dissolved state dissolved oxygen and dissolved uh, carbon dioxide both are present in the water so due to the presence of that dissolved oxygen and dissolved carbon dioxide Uh, that aquatic uh, survival of aquatic animals and aquatic plants is possible so here uh, though air is present on the earth since very beginning of life air was discovered by john mayo who discovered air was discovered by whom john mayo so john mayo in 1674 in the year of 1674 proved that air is a mixture of two gases john mayo in which year 1674 he proved that air is a mixture of two gases so he called one as active air and other other gases inactive air he uh, he believed air is actually it contains two gases only one is active gas other is inactive gas in the 16 in the year of 1674 who invented john mayo i will ask several questions at the end of this session so just to uh write down the some important points then it was only in 1718 that antony lavoisier who is also known as the father of chemistry father of chemistry he was also known as father of chemistry antony lavoisier identified and named active air as oxygen and inactive air as nitrogen so he just named Uh, the two gases the two gases the first two gases what active gases as oxygen the inactive gases as uh, uh, nitrogen he uh, proved he believed and he identified other scientists in the early 18th century in the year of uh, in 18th century uh, just to uh, discover that air uh, is a mixture of several gases air is a 
mixture of several gases. So what are those gases? The gases like carbon dioxide, water vapor, helium and, and the argon. So uh, air is not, uh, air, air is, uh, air does not contain two gases only. It contains several gases. Understand? Several gases like carbon dioxide, water vapor, helium and argon. Then atmosphere. The earth is surrounded by a thick blanket of air called the atmosphere. So our earth is covered by thick blanket of air. How we covered ourselves in a winter season. So just like that, our earth is also uh, covered by a blanket of air. So that is called what? Atmosphere or atmosphere. So it uh, this blanket of air extends up to uh, several kilometers, several kilometers from the surface of the earth, from the surface of the earth. It means you can see here, so it is an earth, then this layer, you know, the black colored one, so this is called what? Atmospheric layer, atmosphere. So that is called thick blanket of air. So that is covered, our earth is covered with the thick blanket of air is called atmosphere. So it, this atmosphere extends up to several kilometers. How many kilometers? Up to 320 kilometers, up to 320 kilometers. The, there is uh, air all over the land. So the air column at any given place ex, uh, extends vertically upwards to about 300 kilometers. So the composition of air is not the same throughout. So if the composition, composition means what it contains, the air actually contains several gases. So that, that is called what composition. So this composition is not equal uh, throughout that distance, the total distance. So it is actually uh, thick air is present up to several layers. Then uh, the thickness will be slowly, gradually decreasing thickness. Then air thinner, that uh, air blanket or atmosphere uh, will become uh, thinner and thinner as we move upward, as we move upward or as we moving uh, uh, just uh, uh, upward, okay? or into the sky just just like that so the air column at any given place and here uh, the air is thicker with gases close to the earth and amount of gases decreases as we move upwards and away from the surface so the earth's atmosphere consists of five layers of air so there are total of five layers total of five layers so these layers cover the earth just as we cover ourselves with two or three blankets in winter season as we uh, cover ourselves in winter season. Okay, one or two or three blankets. So just like that, earth is also covered with several layers of air. Okay, several layers of air. So that, uh, how many layers are present uh, at uh, just around the earth's surface? There are five layers, total five layers are present. So the very first layer or uh, the closest layer to the earth's atmosphere, just earth's surface. So that is what? troposphere, the troposphere. So troposphere is the layer of air closest and next to the earth's surface. So its thickness is about 10 kilometers only, 10 kilometers, up to 10 kilometers. So, so from, from the land, from the land uh, to 10 kilometers above, 10 kilometers above. So that is, that layer is called what? Troposphere, troposphere, understand? So next to, after this 10 kilometer, so another there is another layer starts so that is called what stratosphere. Stratosphere is the next layer of air and extends to about 40 kilometers, up to 40 kilometers it extends. Then after stratosphere, mesosphere and thermosphere, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere and thermosphere are the next layers of air and extend about 300 to 350 kilometers up to uh, that 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 many kilometers, so these layers will be uh, just covered. Then last one is what exosphere. Exosphere is the last layer of air that starts uh, uh, that that uh, starts at an altitude of 400 kilometers and keeps on thinning out as it extends upward. You can see this picture. Okay, this is uh, our Earth's surface. You assume this is the land. So from this uh, 10 kilometers, if you go to 10 kilometers, up to 10 kilometers, so this layer is called what? Troposphere. 
then after 10 kilometers there is one more layer starts so that is called stratosphere troposphere stratosphere then next one mesosphere up to 50 kilometers then thermosphere the final one is what exosphere so all these uh, layers collectively called atmosphere atmosphere understand the all the layers collectively called what atmosphere so the air that we breathe belongs to the troposphere only so the whatever the air we breathing so that uh, uh, we are getting from which layer troposphere layer so as we go up and away from the earth surface the air becomes thinner so the air will be reducing slowly decreasing as we move upward as we move upward from the uh, earth surface at surface so that uh, uh, that density of oxygen or air will be slowly decreasing so it is uh, it is not possible to breathe at this altitude without oxygen cylinders so the mountaineers who are uh, climbing the mountains usually they carry an oxygen cylinder along with them because at uh, at uh, uh, high altitude it's not uh, it is highly impossible to breathe because their uh, oxygen levels slowly decreasing slowly decreasing so uh, whatever the air we breathing we are breathing that belongs to troposphere only so it is a, uh, a thick blanket thick blanket of air so as we moving upward then this uh, thickness slowly decreasing and it becomes thinner and thinner understand then importance of atmosphere what is the importance of this atmosphere actually so it is a very very important atmosphere is very very important for us usually it is a mixture of uh, mixture of gases mainly nitrogen and oxygen major content major composition by volume or by mass nitrogen is 75 percentage actually actually occupied by volume or mass then oxygen the next one around 28.1 something okay then the atmosphere surrounding the earth is very important for life and sustenance of life the atmosphere has two important functions so usually it, this will uh, protect us from the dangerous ultraviolet rays of the sun so uh, from the sun uh, always the dangerous ultraviolet rays uv rays always uh, falling on the earth falling on the earth so actually uh, that uh, ultraviolet rays dangerous to the humans if uh, they falling if that uh, ultraviolet rays are falling on your skin we uh, will uh, uh, cause some diseases like skin cancer and uh, uh, burning uh, sensation burning sensation understand so th th that is why so that ultraviolet rays are protecting uh, are uh, preventing so this atmosphere just protecting from these ultraviolet rays only so uh, just this is uh, that atmosphere behaves uh, like a wall like a wall so that is uh, it is not possible to enter these ultraviolet rays uh, from these layers understand so actually there is a layer ozone layer ozone layer so due to the presence of this layer ozone layer so these ultraviolet rays are not entering into the earth's atmosphere earth's atmosphere otherwise we will cause several dangerous diseases if ultraviolet rays directly fall on our skin okay then air is matter so these are the main important understand if our atmosphere is not present how uh, we can survive we cannot survive because ultraviolet rays are dangerous we will uh, uh, cause some uh, several uh, skin diseases so it is protecting us and also it balances the earth's temperature it earth's temperature understand atmosphere balances the earth's temperature uh, it is not too cool and it is not too hot that is why we are our uh, the survival of living being is possible on the planet earth otherwise if it is not balances if it is not balanced then uh, we cannot survive understand all the living beings cannot survive or if it is too hot continuously if it is hot we cannot survive or if it is continuously cool 
also we cannot survive so if it is some days cool and some days hot then uh, the survival of uh, human beings or living beings can be uh, possible on the planet earth so how that is possible because of the atmosphere only our earth's temperature balances are uh, balances by this atmosphere only understand so that is the main importance of the atmosphere what are the two important two uh, important uh, features of atmosphere one is uh, protecting uh, from dangerous ultraviolet rays and other is uh, uh, balancing the earth's temperature balancing the earth's temperature it is neither too hot nor too cold for living organisms okay so air is matter then air is a matter actually it is it is a matter so what do you define what do you mean by your matter matter is nothing but anything which has mass and occupy some space and uh, perceived by our senses is called a matter perceived by our senses that can be perceived by our senses is called a matter so here air can occupy uh, occupy a space all the available space it can occupy and it has a mass also mass also and also we can feel it so air is a matter understand air is a matter so moving air is called wind air exerts pressure so this can be seen if we blow a balloon and allow the air to escape the air escapes with a swishing sound if you uh, just uh, uh, blow a balloon and try to uh, remove uh, your finger or just to try to uh, release your fingers then how uh, that balloon Uh, just escape from your try to escape from your hands from your uh, fingers uh, because of what because of uh, air pressure only because of air pressure so that is called what wind air pressure and air escapes with a swishing sound so as air is a gaseous mixture it can be compressed it can be compressed means what compressed means so air is actually it is a gaseous mixture so i can hold some amount of gas in my Uh, two palm, uh, two palms. I can hold. So there is some amount of gas uh, in my palms because of what? Because of uh, this feature only. So I cannot compress this one. I cannot compress. Understand? I cannot compress this one because it is a solid one. I cannot fit it uh, in in a uh, small box. But I can uh, fit a large amount of air in my two palms. So this is called what? Compressing nature. So because of this compressing nature. Uh, that uh, gas can be stored in a cylinder small cylinder understand so that can be transported from one place to another place that is what that is uh, called what compressing nature compressing nature air is a uh, gaseous mixture so it can be compressed that uh, solids and liquids cannot be compressed liquids can be compressed but not uh, uh, just like uh, gas moderately it can be compressed water but solids cannot be compressed understand so next composition of air so in ancient times air was considered as an element among five so total five elements uh, were considered okay five elements like fire water uh, fire water land sky and air okay so in 1774 levoisier showed that air was a mixture and the main gases in it were nitrogen and oxygen so the composition of air by value here you can see uh, in this uh, schematic diagram you can see uh, the composition of air composition composition means what uh, there are different uh, contents or components different gases that is called what composition of air so here nitrogen 78.1% so you, if you assume this is total 100% Okay, this is total hundred percent. Then here nitrogen can be occupied seventy eight point one percent. Then oxygen can be occupied twenty point nine percent. Then you can see this one only one percent, only one percent that are other gases seventy eight point then twenty ninety eight point one something ninety eight and uh, just ninety nine percent and one percent only other organ and other gases are present in the. Uh, air okay air is a, uh, just uh, air contains mostly nitrogen 78.1 percentage then remain then 20.9 percentage is oxygen and 1 percentage is other gases you can see this table also nitrogen 78 then oxygen 21 percent then carbon dioxide
What Roser? Why did you raise your hand? Hello? Okay. Uh, inertic gases, this much percent where water vapor varies. Water vapor is not uh, uh, constant. Water vapor is not constant because uh, uh, some places are hot, some places are cold. So according to the Earth's uh, uh, condition, atmospheric conditions, so that water vapor uh, will be varied. Then impurities and uh, impurities varies. Uh, dust impurities and dust particles varies uh, from place to place. Impurities and uh, uh, dust particles. So air is a mixture. Actually, already you know air is a mixture. Air is not a single element. Air is not a single element. In ancient time, it was uh, uh, believed that air is an element, one element. But air is not an element. Air is a mixture. Air is a mixture. So there are several gases. Are there are uh, some several gases present in air? Uh, then air is a mixture and not a compound. So the composition of air varies from place to place and from time to time. For example, the percentage of water vapor in air depends on both the place and the season also. So in uh, at our place, it is a, a rainy season. So at this place, water vapor that our humidity is more. Or if you go to other country like Dubai, now it is a, uh, uh, there is a summer season. Understand? There is a summer season. So there is no uh, humidity like this or there is no water vapor around us like this. So that water vapor and dust particles and this uh, uh, okay uh, this will be varied from place to place and time to time the liquid air has no fixed boiling point the, the components of air retain their individual properties air has no particular formula water has a particular formula h2o but air has no particular formula because it is not a single one it is an element uh, sorry it is uh, it is uh, just a Mixture, mixture of several gases. Then Roser, uh, uh, switch on your camera. Karthike, Manitej, Alfina, Manitej. Turn your camera on Dikshita. Karthike, Manitej, Vaishwik. Okay, Vaishwik. Uh, Alfina, sit at particular place. Roser, sit properly. Next, components of air. Okay, components. What are the components mainly? Nitrogen, oxygen, 
and other inert gases that is called components okay that are called components of air so nitrogen about four fifths of the air is nitrogen gas <clears throat> Create with maths is a perfect platform which you give to the child to be future ready. Introduction Rahul has a windmill. Taking the windmill in hand, he starts running. See, the windmill in his hand is moving so fast. How does it happen? See, this boy is flying a kite. The kite flies so high. How does it fly? What Karthik am? Sir, my screen is brilliant. Sir, my screen is brilliant. What question? The screen is clear. Clear now? Yes. Okay. The windmill moves due to movement of air, and so does the kite fly. Objectives. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to define air. Explain the different constituents of air. Discuss the properties and uses of air. Explain air as a mixture. Are you feeling hot due to lack of air? Now put your ceiling fan on. You can feel the presence of air. You must have sensed the nice cold breeze in a fine morning. This is also due to movement of air. This moving air is called wind. We can know the direction of wind with the help of wind vanes. Air is colorless and enables us to see everything through it as it is. It has no smell and taste. Okay. Air is colorless and it is a transparent. Uh, it is okay. Uh, tasteless but we can feel the presence of air we can feel the presence of air when we feel hot uh, we can switch on uh, the ceiling fan uh, so later we can feel that air um, the presence of air <clears throat> then moving air is called wind moving air is called wind and we can also know the direction of the wind by using uh, wind uh, mills or wind vanes Wind vanes. You can see that. Uh, uh, okay, you can see the direction in which that uh, air is moving. Air occupies space. To understand this, take a pitcher and dip straight into the water. See, no water enters into the pitcher. Now tilt the pitcher slightly. See, the air bubbles are coming out of the pitcher, and water starts entering into it. So you can see that the pitcher is not empty. Air that was present in the pitcher is coming out. This shows that air occupies space. When you try to uh, just uh, put a pitcher or a beaker or glass, okay, whichever available to us, that one we can use to uh, do this experiment or activity. Okay, when you try to uh, uh, dip a glass beaker or glass into a uh, water, 
bucket full of water so uh, that uh, uh, no water will be trying to enter the glass so when you tilt when you tilt it then uh, some amount of uh, water will be enter into the glass while uh, some bubbles are escaping from the glass understand escaping from the glass it means that uh, air bubbles bubbles are forming means the air is escaping from the glass then the water is trying to enter the glass so it means that uh, air occupies whatever the space available to it inflate and air below what do you see it grows in size this shows that air occupies space and has no definite shape air has weight so it has a uh, particular it, it has no particular shape actually it has no particular shape and uh, it has no particular volume also as well put the air filled ball on one side of the balance and a similar empty and squeezed ball on the other side as you can see the band with squeezed ball goes up indicating that it is lighter than the air filled one now take two empty test tubes and place a balloon over the mouth of each bottle put one test tube in a pan of hot water and the other one in a pan with ice observe carefully the balloon on the test tube in hot water begins to inflate this is because the hot water heats the air inside test tube and the ice cools the air in the other when air gets warm it expands and rises which inflate so when uh, this uh, test tube is uh, kept in hot water so usually uh, this hot water uh, uh, try to or uh, that uh, air which is present in a test tube that will slowly expand slowly expand due to the uh, presence of heat energy or which is uh, coming from the hot water which is coming from the hot water so you due to that uh, hotness uh, this air which is present in a test tube slowly expands slowly expands and uh, enter into a balloon so that is why balloon uh, uh, will be inflated and the other one ice usually the air will be slowly contracts by ice so that is why this will be happened so air uh, it's the balloon has a pressure on the other hand cool air contracts causing the other balloon to shrink this shows that air exerts pressure take a cylinder fitted with piston press the piston inward you can compress inside the cylinder so air can be compressed take the incorrect statement what is air made up of air contains nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide and other rare gases you can see so this this is composition of air composition uh, what are the components are present in air nitrogen the major component major percentage 78.1 percentage of nitrogen is present in the atmospheric air the next one 20.9 percentage oxygen is present okay 20.9 then 0.03 to 0.04 percentage uh, carbon dioxide then other gases 0.94 percentage then water vapor smoke and dust these are the composition of air first one nitrogen oxygen then carbon dioxide other gases water vapor smoke and dust particles i can ask you uh, a question based on this one okay from this table that nitrogen has the largest share then finally carbon dioxide has the least water vapor smoke and dust are present in very less amount do you see that air is a mixture of different gases when you take out a water bottle from the freeze some water droplets come from is water leaking through the bottle no it's not the case water vapor present in the air turns back into liquid when it touches the cold outer surface of the bottle 
This proves air contains water vapor. Now take lime water in a test tube. With a syringe, blow some air through this solution. You can see that lime water turns milky. This indicates the presence of carbon dioxide in air. Put your torchlight on while walking through a dark place. You will see tiny shining particles moving in the beam of torchlight. These are the dust particles present in air. All these activities bring us to conclusion that air is a mixture of gases and dust particles. Match the correct pairs. Okay, nitrogen, about four-fifths of the air is nitrogen gas, then oxy is, uh, nitrogen is a colorless, odorless and tasteless gas. Nitrogen is a colorless, it has no color and it has no smell. Odor means smell, Odor, odorless means no smell and no taste also, no taste also. Nitrogen is not combustible neither, uh, it supports combustion, okay, neither combustible nor uh, supports combustion. Uh, combustion process, you know, burning process, it does not support combustion. It does not support combustion and it, all, it is also not combustible uh, gas. Then nitrogen is chemically neutral. Nitrogen is chemically neutral. So role of nitrogen in air. Nitrogen controls burning. So when, uh, when there is a burning, then we can control fire. When uh, we can control fire by using uh, this bag, this gas, because nitrogen controls burning. So just imagine if air contained only oxygen, I understand, you assume, if air is only contained oxygen, uh, then uh, when a matches stick is uh, lighted or burnt, when a matches stick is uh, uh, struck, it would burst into a dangerous flame because if only oxygen is present in air, then this uh, fire continuously goes on. Nitrogen is actually it is a uh, it is neither a combustible substance nor uh, supports combustion. So that is why that uh, flame is not continuously goes on. If nitrogen is absent, uh, if uh, just uh, if we uh, uh, strike a light, ma match stick, then uh, it would be uh, burst into a dangerous flame. The nitrogen in the air gets converted to nitrogen containing compounds during thunderstorms. When nitrogen in the air, so just that will be converted to nitrogen containing compounds such as nitric acid, mainly the nitrogen monoxide. These nitrogen compounds mix with rainwater and fall on the earth. The plants absorb these nitrogen compounds and convert them to proteins. Proteins are important nutrients for humans. Okay. The next second one is oxygen. About one fifth, one fifth of the air is oxygen gas. Four fifth nitrogen, one fifth oxygen. Oxygen is colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas. It is also. It is also. Uh, tasteless, odorless, and a colorless gas. Oxygen does not burn, but supports all types of combustion processes. Combustion processes, okay? It does not uh, combust in itself. So oxygen is chemically neutral. It is chemically neutral gas. So role of oxygen in air, all types of burning require oxygen. In the absence of oxygen, burning or combustion process cannot be taken place in the absence of oxygen. In the presence of oxygen, only burning process will be taken place. Otherwise, burning process will not be taken place. Understand? So we would not be, uh, without oxygen, we would not be able to burn fuels and produce heat and light. Oxygen is required for breathing also. Breathing. So we, uh, uh, just uh, survival of uh, living beings on the planet Earth, uh, is possible because of the presence of oxygen only. Even for a few moments, we cannot survive without oxygen, even for a few minutes. 
the next one carbon dioxide so very small percentage of air to the extent about 0.03 percentage is carbon dioxide in the uh, earth's atmosphere then carbon dioxide is a colorless odorless gas but it has a slight sore taste it has a sore taste but it is also colorless and odorless gas carbon dioxide does not burn and does not support combustion carbon dioxide is chemically acidic uh, substance because it is a non metallic oxide carbon dioxide is a non metallic oxide and it has it it has acidic nature acidic nature when it is dissolved in water it can produce carbonic acid carbonic acid it is acid so carbon dioxide is a chemically acidic in nature acidic in nature carbon dioxide does not burn but and uh, does not support combustion okay neither combustible nor supporter of combustion that is why oxygen uh, sorry carbon dioxide is uh, used as a uh, as a fire extinguisher fire extinguisher low role of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis by plants carbon dioxide is required by plants how do they use carbon dioxide they uh, use carbon dioxide to produce or to prepare their own food called starch plants that process is called what photosynthesis photosynthesis is a process of making food by plants making food by plants and how do they produce uh, their own food um, from photosynthesis uh, and water and carbon dioxide also carbon dioxide they will breathe and oxygen they will release then oxygen in air should decrease uh, so during photosynthesis plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen photosynthesis by plants replaces oxygen and maintains the oxygen level in the air so during photosynthesis process process uh, plants uh, breathe the carbon dioxide release oxygen in order to maintain carbon dioxide level in the air then earth would be very cold without carbon dioxide if there is no carbon dioxide uh, then the earth would be very cool because of the carbon dioxide only the majority of the uh, are uh, hot that hotness is absorbed by these carbon dioxide gaseous molecules only a part of the sun's heat radiation is absorbed by carbon dioxide making the air warm and suitable for living otherwise if carbon dioxide is not present then uh, survival of the human beings is not possible on the planet earth so just it absorbs uh, heat energy which is coming from the sun so that uh, heat energy will be used by human beings to survive on the planet earth then water vapor so the amount of water vapor in air is called humidity the humidity is in air varies from place to place it is not equal at all the places it will be uh, varied or different from place to place humidity is high near the seas and water bodies and less in the uh, plate use so we are uh, uh, just to okay, present it plate use so here humidity is very less but if you go to a sea it means uh, near uh, the places uh, nearby sea like uh, vizag or mumbai if you go to such places then uh, you can feel more uh, humid weather then role of water vapor then how Uh, this ro this water vapor uh, is helping to us usually water vapor is essential for photosynthesis by plants it helps to maintain the level of water in fruits and vegetables since uh, they would become dry if the water vapor content in air is very low moisture keeps the skin moist okay if the if uh, water vapor is not present or it if it is absent if it is absent then uh, this fruits and vegetables uh, gets uh, Uh, dehydrated gets dehydrated understand so inert gas elements inert gas elements are present to the extent of less than 1 percentage only only 1 percentage among 100 percentage 79 or 78 percentage nitrogen 21 percentage oxygen then 1 uh, percentage other gases like helium neon or inert gas just like inert gases so all inert gas elements are colorless odorless and tasteless all the inert gases helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon all these gases are colorless odorless and tasteless they are chemically 
inactive gases they are chemically inactive gases so role of the inert gas elements so inert gas elements are uh, separated from air by liquefying it so the inert gas elements present in air are helium neon argon krypton and xenon last one is radon helium is a very light inert gas element helium is very light because its atomic number is 2 only so that is why it is a very light inert gas element so it is filled in uh, weather balloons uh, which rise into the air to predict weather conditions so just that helium gas uh, is filled into a balloon so that is called helium balloon helium balloon because it is helium gas is a very lighter gas very lighter gas its atomic number is 2 only okay approximately it is a 4 gram uh, okay that is why it is a very uh, <coughs> lighter gas so uh, it is filled in a balloon Uh, to understand the the weather conditions or how much humidity is present in a particular place that can be uh, uh, obtained by uh, these balloons so argon another you know to get neon helium and argon are used in a glow science glow science means what uh, in a submarines or sorry ships and uh, if you go to cinema theaters cinema theaters that uh, uh, okay helium bulbs or neon bulbs or argon bulbs will be kept up so that uh, 